Hi, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 6 of our Catalan Studio video series. And in this video we are talking about automating native Xamarin iOS application in Mac operating system with Catalan Studio. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 4 and 2 because in that video we discussed about automating Catalan Studio for mobile application on Android operating system with Windows 10 operating system. Alright, so let's get started. So let's quickly recap what we discussed so far in our Catalan Studio video series. We already discussed about Catalan Studio to test both Android as well as the web application in Windows 10 operating system and we also discussed how to work with different kinds of tools and techniques and we also saw what is the new beta version of Catalan Analytics and how you can store the report and how you can drill down the result details in much granular way. So those are the things that we discussed in our previous videos of this course. And today we're going to talk about a little different this time. And basically it's a Catalan with Mac operating system and iOS application automation. Well, it's pretty much the same like Android automation except that there needs few configurations to be taken care of before working with Catalan Studio to work with the iOS application because it's not pretty straightforward to work with the iOS application these days because Mac has brought so many restrictions and these restrictions are something that we already taken care of. if you have already watched the Xamarin video series where in Xamarin we used to install the Xamarin test cloud so that it injects the Calabas server within the application under test so that the Xamarin.UI test can identify and recognize objects and perform the operation and here in this case we have to work with what is called as appm xcuit to be running so that it can identify the elements and talk to the application under test http server to perform the identification of objects under test so the configuration of the catalan studio is not a big process it's, it's pretty much the same thing download the catalan studio as we did in windows 10 operating system just double click you'll be prompted with the authentication of your activation of the product that's it you're good to go but before starting to work with the iOS application in the Mac operating system, we need to install what is called as Homebrew from our terminal. Well, the Homebrew is more like the chocolatey of Windows where you install the different kinds of softwares. That's exactly this. We already discussed about the Homebrew in our previous videos of Xero Automation channel to install Visual Studio for Mac. Well, that's what it is. So Homebrew basically is a chocolatey for Windows in Mac operating system world. And then you have to install the cartage for the homebrew so that you can add some framework to the Coca applications. And then we need to install the node and npm with the homebrew. And again, because you have installed the homebrew, you can install node and npm much easily with few commands here and there. And then finally, we need to install the appium. Well, appium is the guy which is going to be working with the iOS application to identify the elements within it. So we are going to do exactly the same thing today and we'll see how things are going to work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Chrome. Alright, so as said, I am going to go over here and you can see that I have just searched for Catalan iOS automation and it took me to this particular link. So I'm going to click that. Basically, I'm going to walk you through quickly on the documentation, at least a half of it so that we can perform this kind of setup much easily than doing that in the slide. So let's do this. The first thing which I said before is going to be the installation of the homebrew. So as I said before, the homebrew is like a package manager uh, in chocolatey for Windows. That's exactly this. So you can go here, you can copy this particular uh, command and then go to the terminal and just paste this guy and hit enter. So this is going to install the homebrew for you. I have already installed the homebrew in my machine. So it shouldn't be installing this once again for me. You can see that. It's already there. That's it. And I guess uh, it's going to install once again. Not pretty sure. There we go. It's installing the homebrew. I guess it is uh, installing the updated version of the homebrew. So it's going to do that. And once you're done with the homebrew installation, then we need to install the Carthage. Again, this is something which I have already installed in my machine. So just copy these commands and install that. Similarly, you have to install the uh, node and npm. So everything is going to be over there, right? So installation of node is much easy. So the brew command is nothing but the one with the homebrew. So brew install node and brew install npm. So these things are going to install node and npm for you. 
Finally, Appium. So I have already installed the Appium. So if you don't really believe where the Appium actually sits in my machine, you can directly go to Control Shift G. This is gonna bring which folder you're gonna go in. And you can see that there is something called as users local lib slash node modules of Appium node modules. So if you hit go, you can see that it's gonna bring me this Appium guy. And these are the installation of Appium's being done. So this is the place where all of your uh, libraries for uh, different kinds of nodes are going to sit in basically. So if you delete it and hit it OK, you can see Appium, Cordava, Ionic, NPM, Webpack. So these are the different kinds of node modules I have in my Mac operating system right now. And this is the Appium and this is the node modules. And these are the different kinds of driver it has installed. You can see it has the Appium Android Bootstrap, Appium Android Drivers, Appium Android IME, Driver, Chrome Driver, Espresso Driver, Remote Debugger, Slendroid Drivers, and things of that nature. So you can see there are different kinds of driver it has already installed. But the one which we actually require is this guy, Appium XCUIT Test Drivers. Why is this Appium XCUIT Test is kind of very important because this was not the case before in the iOS automation. Why suddenly it is right now? So just try to do this. Let's search for Appium XCUIT test driver. You can see that this is the current version of the Apple iOS automation driver. And you can see the latest version of uh, code checking happened just four days before. So and today is Sunday. Basically nobody worked for this guy right now, but you can see that it is currently activated even in Thursday. So people are working on the Appium XUI test driver so that you can perform the different kinds of operations. So basically it is natively supported by the XC test and it is implemented by the corresponding mobile endpoints. So this is very, very important. And the reason why you install all these guys are because of this one, right? So that's exactly what it is. So this is the driver which we are gonna work with for the Appium automation. And this is exactly what is being used by the Catalan Studio, right? So that's what is the next installation and the configuration that we need to have to do. And where is this gonna be taken place? Basically, it is gonna be taken place by kind of opening with the Xcode. So if you go all the way over here, let me go to this terminal, all right. Not the terminal, sorry. Go to the browser and you can see there is a uh, X. You need to have the Apple account ID. I already have an Apple account ID, just that this machine comes with the Apple account ID. So I have installed that already and it's there for me. And you can see that there is a XCUIT, XCUI test drivers of the uh, web driver and then they are doing some make directory of the uh, hyphen p of resources web driver agent dot bundle so this particular resources folder you can see web driver agent there is a resource folder and there is a web driver agent dot bundle basically i just uh, compiled this into this particular bundle just before our uh, video to be captured but what it has to be done basically is this you actually have to come over here and go to the terminal and just try to drag this guy here and uh, put in CD so that you can navigate to that particular uh, directory you can see I have very very bad uh, Mac experience so that's why I'm just doing so many bad thing here all right so now I'm here so what it has to be done basically is this you have to just copy these guys uh, basically you can see it's uh, doing an MKDIR of P resources web driver bundle. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste this guy over here. There we go. I'm going to hit the enter. So it was already there and it's not going to be doing something great here, but basically that's what I'm about to do. And then it has to be, uh, and then you have to just uh, script it and you have to paste this command sh dot slash scripts of bootstrap sh and D. So it's gonna fetch all the dependencies required for the bootstrap. And then what you have to do is just basically you have to open uh, the web driver agent. There is the uh, web driver agent dot uh, X code. Basically it has added all the dependencies for you. And now that you can see that uh, if I just click this web driver agent, 
you can see there is a signing and uh, it has automatically chosen the Karthi KK personal team which is mine and uh, if I try to build this particular uh, project it is gonna just build the project for me uh, don't know where the thing is actually see you can see I'm still very bad in the uh, in Mac as well as uh, in Xcode at least so you can see it's currently building things for me uh, there we go it has succeeded and you also have to build uh, the uh, library so I'm gonna choose that and the same uh, signing authorities for that so I'm just gonna build it again and now if you go to the finder uh, let's go back here web driver agent of the uh, resources you can still see uh, this particular library still exists which means everything is fine right now we don't really have any problem the build has succeeded so this is the only change which we have to do and I'm gonna close the Xcode uh, right let me quit it and now if I come back to our Catalan studio well I have downloaded the Catalan studio in iOS operating system already and it is installed in my machine so if you just search for Catalan studio with spotlight it's gonna bring you the Catalan studio and here we have to do only one change the only one change which we have to do in the Catalan studio is to refer the Appium path so oops it has forgot me I thought it remembers me but somehow it did not so I'm gonna activate there we go it has activated so I'm gonna close it I'm gonna hit OK again uh, let's cancel this so the one change which we need to do in the Catalan studio as I said before is to go to the preference of the Catalan studio over here and just go to the Catalan mobile and here I have referred the path of the Appium remember the same path which I just showed before that's exactly what it is so this is the path where you have to mention that this is where our Appium is actually sitting right so this is the only change which we have to do in the Catalan studio that's it right so this is the configuration part of the Catalan studio with the Mac operating system and everything is good right now and all I have to do is this we will try to quickly identify uh, that whether the iOS operating system is being recognized or any applications which is built for the iOS operating system is being recognized by the Catalan Studio objects by or things of that nature. So for that what I'm going to do is just I'm going to go to the file uh, new of project and let's give a name here why not uh, test one and uh, I'm gonna hit OK so this is gonna be the first test for our Mac operating systems uh, iOS operating system and here I'm gonna create a new test case uh, let's call this as first Mac OS test all right and then I'm gonna hit OK so this is gonna create a test case for us and now I'm gonna use our object spy so this is the spy mobile which is gonna be like an object spy in QTP so uh, I'm going to select that and you can see that uh, it has brought the mobile object spy here and now we have to choose which device we are going to spy in so if you're going to spy any one of the device let's say if I'm going to spy the uh, iPhone X simulator then you probably have to select that particular one and then I'm going to select our application which is built for the iOS application well as I said before we are going to automate the Xamarin application using Catalan Studio we already discussed about Xamarin.UI test in our earlier courses in Udemy so I'm going to use the same application this time and this application currently even exists in our github so if you just navigate to the github slash exit automation and go to the repo and here you can see we have the Xamarin.UI test well this is the application you can just download it and then you can just build it it will become like a iOS application for you as well so you can just take that app uh, and then you can install like what I'm doing it right now so the Xamarin.UI test this is the project so even if you download it from the github this is what is gonna come in and then the iOS bin iPhone simulator and uh, let's go to the device build and this is the uh, application so you need to choose the app which is nothing but the iOS application and now if I choose this you can see it comes in open so this is the application which I'm going to automate right now and 
Now, if I'm gonna run with the local devices, if I try to select, let's say some simulator, and if I try to hit start, what happens is it is gonna talk to the particular simulator using your Appium, the driver that we just created, this guy, the web driver agent. So basically this is gonna be installed into your simulator and then it is gonna talk with your application behind the scene to send the commands and request back to you uh, to and fro. So let's see what's really gonna happen. So you can see that launching the web driver agent on the device. Let's see what's happening there. There we go. You can see that the web driver agent just installed for us and it has just spawned the application as well for us. There we go. That was really cool. And now it's trying to capture all the objects and bingo, you can see all the object has come in for us. And now let me go to this add item. You can see it is showing somewhere wrongly, but still it is actually identifying the particular element. So you can select that and then you can perform the object repositories of things of that nature. And then you can just run the test and it will actually run. So all those stuffs we're going to discuss in our next video. In this video, to recap, what we did was this. We have configured all the prerequisite environment setup in our Mac operating system using the Catalan for the Catalan Studio and we also use the mobile object spy to identify the object. We started the application, everything is cool. In our next video, we'll just continue from here and try to automate a very simple flow of the Xamarin application using Catalan Studio. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.